Okay, folks, welcome to section 1.2 of the Cable Traders Introduction course. Thanks everyone to who submitted their homework on the first section. I have to stress that this is an applied course. I'm an active trader. I'm not a teacher per se. So I've given tasks to do there for a specific reason uh, to save you the pain I endured to get into where I am today. Okay, so just a little bit about myself. My background's in economics. I did my master's on game theory, which is a field of applied mathematics, which I used in the context of financial markets. Um, my first job was as an investment consultant, which basically means um, large institutions like charities, endowments, pension funds, etc., are legally obliged to seek advice on their investments okay so they can't just go willy-nilly and invest their own way they have to seek advice uh, especially with pension funds they're legally obliged to meet liabilities i.e becoming fully funded to meet the obligations of future pensioners so a lot of my job was choosing investments to meet this purpose and deciding asset allocation based on risk parameters set by liabilities. It was, a, it was a field of investment called liability driven investment, but it's kind of outside of the scope of what we're talking about today. So after that, I moved to Canada, moved to Toronto. Um, I did a number of things, including starting businesses, working with breweries, believe it or not. It's a whole other story I won't get into here. Uh, it gave me a taste for entrepreneurship though, which really gave me a deep sense of like motivation which I'd never felt before. And it made me extremely happy having a purpose, something to get up for every day. Um, after that, I thought I'd give investment another try. Uh, I became an investment manager, which is basically what used to be called a stockbroker. So I was choosing investments for individuals' portfolios, deciding asset allocation, advising an individual stocks, that kind of thing. I actually kind of like this job, but along came COVID. The markets lost a third of their value in the space of, what, a month? Um, and my head was on the chopping block before I knew it, and I was made redundant while I was on furlough. So I have to stress, I was not a trader, I was an analyst. Basically, I was the guy deciding on the investment, which was then executed by a trader. So they're two very different disciplines. Uh, so I'm not telling you I'm a pro trader with decades of experience. That's not what I'm trying to convey here. So anyway, thank you for a while. I didn't really have much enthusiasm to go back to the office grind. It didn't motivate me much. So I figured combining my interest with markets with entrepreneurship led me to trading my own account. So two years later, here we are. Uh, I started a community basically as soon as I started trading because I have a natural need to network, to talk to others, to find out what others are doing, make friends and so on. I can't just sit behind a computer screen with my own thoughts and I just go crazy. Uh, the group started on Telegram, eventually morphed onto Discord. And at some point about four months ago, I got asked for a mentorship and now we are here. So the first section of 1.2 is extremely basic, and you probably know these concepts already, but there will likely be those who don't too. So this is the primer, something to get you thinking. It is related to the strategy, but it's not the actual strategy, if that makes sense. It's a concept, that's all. So I wanna direct your attention to GBP USD on the 9th of August and let this unfold. So what we're going to see is a nice resistance line developing. And I'll speed this up so we can just see it a little bit better. And there you go, you can kind of start to see this resistance develop, okay? Uh, 
and we'll just fast forward to the 10th of September just to see what happens here. So what, what will be happening here is traders will be seeing this line and looking to go short here. Um, this is a classic. It's one of the most basic theories in trading is support and resistance. Sell on resistance, buy on support. Everyone knows this, um, and it's n it's not what we're teaching here, really. Uh, there'll be thousands, literally tens of thousands of traders now seeing this as strong resistance. Okay, so people selling here, putting their stops up here. Um, I'm just going to pause this at the 10th of September because this is our kind of area where we start to get interested. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, a great line of resistance, okay? And literally billions of dollars or, or pounds of um, buy stops, essentially. And this is money that uh, market makers, liquidity providers can use uh, to take, to use to fund orders for their clients. So let's just see what happens. More shorts, everyone's going short. And then boom. Okay, this is the point that we're kind of interested in, and this is the manipulation, okay? So this is deliberately done by market makers, and we can identify what the manipulation looks like on the futures footprint, okay? So this is just a stylized example, just to kind of prove a point. Um, it's, it's not the strategy. I'm not telling you, okay, look out for resistance, look out for manipulation, then go short. This is not the strategy. It's a stylized example to show where liquidity resides. So we'll let this play out to the 14th of September. And then just see how it unfolds. It's not always this simple, I have to stress. It's not like, it's not as simple as what I make out here. I've cherry picked this example just to prove, uh, kind of show you a point. And, um, but once we get to, I think it's the 4th of October, we'll see a similar situation and a manipulation, but it's not as simple. It's not just horizontal um, support and resistance. This is dynamic resistance, sometimes called a trend line. That contains liquidity too. That's uh, something that can be targeted, and it probably will be. Okay. So, 4th of October, we start to see same thing again, resistance line develop, liquidity. To be targeted. Boom. 
Boom, same thing again, hunted. Okay. So we could go short here, but then you see what happens. There is kind of a double grab here. Okay. There's a hunt and then a secondary hunt. And this is classic price action. It's called priming and it happens again. There's a third hunt. So it's not as simple as I kind of made out in that first example. So we can get around this. It's not that hard. Um, so that's just what I'm trying to convey here is the idea of liquidity. Um, we're going to get into more complex things around the actual strategy, um, how we trade intraday. But that's all I want you to be aware of now is where liquidity resides, usually above horizontal support and resistance established lines. The idea that it can be double hunted and sometimes triple hunted. And that's it for this section. That's all I want you to know. OK.